Professor Steve Baca. <laughs> Professor. La- lifelong uh, martial artist. Yeah, musician. Yeah. Uh, you've done everything across the board. <sighs> done a lot of stuff. You know, that's the one thing that, you know, like I wanted with my kids, I tell them all the time, um, you don't have to do just one thing in your life. You know, it's, you don't have to have just an A. I wanted to experience, uh, at the end of my life, I want to say I did this, I did mm. that, I did this, I did that, um, without any boundaries. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I've done, I try to do so many things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Uh, yeah, NoHo MMA, you yes, know, the, the school n- n- NoHo MMA. Yeah, so h- how did your martial arts uh, journey start? How did it begin? Because yeah, you've done Kali, yeah. you've done, I mean, you've done everything across yes. the board. Um, I started, I, it's an interesti- interesting story. When I was playing music, um, we were, right before we got a recording contract on Hollywood Records, we were headlining the Whiskey A Go-Go. And so... We played the show and had some friends there, and I got off on st- I got off stage, and you know you know you know when you see somebody looking at you and you know it's just not right, mm-hmm. you know. But I wasn't a martial artist yet, so I knew something was wrong. And this person, and he was a big dude, was just eyeballing me. I'm like, hmm. And I was talking to my singers, mom and dad, and the minute they walked away, this guy comes up behind me and just starts pummeling me. You know, he broke my eye socket, oh threw no me over way. tables. Um, it was that was the impetus for me to start the martial arts. Um, threw me over the tables, ran outside. They caught him. My dad caught him. They arrested him. And this guy got, you know, for that, I mean, it was it was violent. Wow. Um, he got he like, broke your orbital? He broke my orbital. He wow. got public service, you know, and I said this was never going to happen again. And you got to remember this was um, 89, mm-hmm. you know, long, long time ago. There was no internet. I mean, for me, I thought the martial arts was Jean-Claude Van Damme. You yeah. know, that's what I thought it was. So my first foray in the martial arts was actually with, Frank Dukes from Bloodsport. Oh, that no was, way. Yeah, that was my I first. I think I met him at one of those martial art Hall of Fame kind of yeah. dinners. Yeah, he, he's crazy. Um, he has like a like a crooked eye or something. Yeah, too, he right? does. Yeah. It's like yeah. one eye early. Yeah. You, know, you, know, you don't know where it's going. Um, he Back then, you know, it's like you had to pay for the, you know, pay, you would pay for a belt and you had to sign a contract. So I paid for this belt and you're looking at 1989. Was it, was, it was karate? What was it, it was, called? It was. I wanted to be a ninja, you know, it was, it was li- literally ninjutsu and Damn. he took my money and then he, two months later, he bolted like he just bolted. So I had no place to go. Um, again, wanted to be Jean-Claude Van Damme and Bruce Lee. I moved to Pasadena and I started an American Kempo and that's, was mm. my base karate. I'm um, learning like a hard style. So you supplements. started as an adult. You I started, started as, as an adult. adult. Yeah, I did. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't get a chance. To it just seems like you're such that that's, you're like Zen. That's your, your place, you know? I see you doing the music and all that, yeah. but it just seems like it's something you've been doing forever. You know, like I mean, you it has been because yeah, it, you seem like you seem like you're I'm <laughs> not young. in your thirties, but yeah, yeah no, I have, the, you know, I I have OCD and I'm a little on the spectrum, um, so I get fixated on stuff. Mm. I would practice five six hours a day, so as you know, like other people, you know, would only spend an hour or two a week, three maybe three hours a week. Then they go about their daily business. I practice all day, every single second, just like I do jujitsu. Um, and that's how I got, I think, I didn't get good fast. Mm. I just, I immersed myself. But you, you did Kempo Karate. That yeah. What year was that? That was, I think I started in 92. 92, started 92, okay. Yeah. Okay, right before the UFCs, huh? Right before the UFC. Right before the UFCs. Yeah. And then Jiu-Jitsu came out. We, we saw the first UFC as a, as a group, um, a karate guys. <laughs> um, we all thought that Kempo was going to do great in the mm. system. And, you know, Interesting. Uh, yeah, and I mean, he, the guy—I forgot the guy's name—who was a Kempo practitioner. Mm. He did pretty good. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, it's jujitsu, man. Yeah. Um, if you don't know jujitsu, you're going to be in trouble. And so, you know, that started opening my eyes to jujitsu. But there was no jujitsu. I was in Pasadena. There was no jujitsu anywhere near right. Pasadena. There was nothing. You know, there was no YouTube. There was nothing. So, looking for jujitsu w- was impossible. You know, I didn't—I didn't get my foray into jujitsu till. Year, until I was a black belt, you know, in Kempo Karate. Um, and then I started with the Gracies in Torrance. In Torrance. Yeah. And that was... You, you sought them out and went to, drove all the way to Torrance to train with them. It was a four-hour 
you know, four hour trip, you know, huh. two hours to get there from Pasadena on the 110, you know, train for an hour, two hours back in traffic. Cause there's always traffic on the, on the, that it's freeway. Like, it's like when you talk to your kids, I went up, I, I walked to school, I had to walk up, up, uphill <laughs> both ways yeah. to go to school, <laughs> but it literally had to drive four hours to, <laughs> to go train jujitsu for one hour. Learn. Right, right. It was a uh, one hour class and I was dreading the drive back. It just, you were in bumper, bumper. It's exactly like that. Mm. Um, it was uh, it w- I was I was there when the kids. It was interesting because my first cross choke experience um, was with Helio. Helio mm. said I was doing the choke wrong. I was a white belt and I was spazzy, um, and he came up to me and he was this little tiny guy, mm. you know, smaller than me. That's cool though. You got to train with him, right? Were you still around? He was. He he choked me to death, and he had these little soft fingers, and I'd never really felt the cross choke before standing. He put his little soft pillows into my neck, and nearly my eyes almost popped out of my his, head. His mitts though. Massive hands, yeah, for yeah. like a smaller guy. Yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a great experience. And then they opened up a Machado Academy in Pasadena, and then I, I obviously went over there because it was just closer. Was it always Hodge Machado? Or was it always it was the Machados, right? Yeah, I started like Higan. with yeah, I started with Hegan. Hegan yeah. was there first, and then it was then it was not even Hodge yet. It was um, he was still I think in Brazil. Um, so then it was John Machado. John then Machado. John Machado came out for a little bit. Then I trained with Mika Sipoli for a long Mika, time. Yeah, he's um, in Vegas now. Yeah, he's in Vegas. And then I trained uh, with with Hodger. Hodger came out and Paulo Gilabel too, right? Was I trained with Paulo for a long time. He yeah. was our main instructor, so I trained with Paulo yeah. for a while. He was in Pasadena yes. for quite a few years. Yes, right? and Leica. 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 Um, Leica. I have a story about Leica too. Mm. So I, again, you know, I. We don't have the internet. We didn't have anybody teaching us, you know, etiquette. We didn't have anybody telling us no, how to talk no, to people. No Instagram videos. <laughs> there was none. I didn't know, you know. And so we go to fight. You know, Lake is like, okay, you fight with me. I'm like, oh, I can't wait. I'm like, I'll be very, very gentle. Mm. And that's all I needed to say for her to just beat me senseless. Mm. Um, I, I, you got to treat people that do jiu-jitsu exactly the same, whether it's a female or a male. Mm. She was brutal, and she was very, very good as a black belt then. And that was my experience with, with Leica. And so that's where that's I, cool. I left. Okay. That's what. That's when we what? That's what I, That's right. I left just shortly after that. Uh, at the Machados. School. Yeah. Oh, I, I see. Yeah. So I, my first school was in Sherman Oaks. Right. Um, and I met you. I met you. I think <laughs> I met you like 2009-ish, right? Yeah. 2000. Because, I, you know, it was like I had moved over to the first Gracie Baja Academy in all of Southern California, right. which I think was Gerson. my uh, Professor Gerson. Yeah. And so you were literally right up the street. And like for me, Professor, I'm all about learning. You know, it's like I will always be a white belt walking onto a mat. I will, you know, because I have about eight black belts in all the, these other systems that I train. But. For me, they're they're just they're not like accomplishments. They're not things that show off. They're just means I've spent a lot of time doing martial arts because I love it. Mm. So you know, it's like I want to train with as many people as I can to be the, you know, the best that I can be. For me, it was mostly about self defense. I wanted, you know, I, I don't believe in politics. You know, I don't believe in, you know, um, you can't train with that person. You can't train with this person. I have my loyalties. You know, I'm a I'm a legacy black belt, and I'll always be a legacy black belt. That's my home. Um, but. I'm a black belt under you because of all the rest of my instructors. Mm-hmm. They all yeah, share sure. a part in what you gave me, what you saw in me to become a black belt. Um, I called you, and I remember uh, Jerson. I came by to see you. I right, met right. you. We met in the parking lot, I remember. Oh, Lord have mercy. Jerson ripped me a new one. Oh, are you my father's student? Why are you going to train? I'm like, professor, professor, he has an MMA program. You know, and it's like, and I, I want to train. He's freaking Alberto Crane. I'm like, and he's four blocks away i'm like i want to train mixed mountain you cannot train anywhere but me and and that was the mentality mm. you know of instructors back in the day yeah yeah, for sure it's not like that now right you know everybody's more free and relaxed and you can't stop people from leaving you know mm-hmm. they're going to do what they want to do and mm-hmm. you have to give them you have to give them you know enough of you you know so they have that loyalty to you yeah you have, have enough confidence right too to, to hey man what's is it better for you you know like I, it's four blocks away that would help him out to evolve and train, it doesn't mean he's yeah. not going to be a student here anymore. Or yeah. Keep coming to train with me, but right. it's convenient for him too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So looking at from not from there, only from them, but yeah. also from your perspective, right? Yeah, from the student's perspective. No, for sure. Uh, you know, I, I what's best for the student, right? For sure. You know, I'd learned that a long time ago. You know, my my first foray in the martial arts with Master Larry Tatum. He was he he was he's still legendary in his art, but mm. you know, having a great 
um, instructor mentor you in how to teach and, you know, and how to treat your students. I mean, he had told me that he's like, your students are going to go train with other people. They need to see what other people are like and they'll either come back or they'll stay. But you have to, um, you have to remember that it's about the student, you mm. know, that what did they say in Cobra Kai or Karate Kid, mm -hmm. there is no bad students, only bad teachers. Mm. And he had taught me that, you know, years and years and years ago. Um, so that's, you know, that's why I sought you out. I'm like, I need to train with him. You know, I want to, I want to know, I want to know, you know, and if you don't search things out, you won't know. And that's why I ended up at your door. But then uh, Professor Jerson got a little upset at me. So I'm like, well, I bet maybe I better not. But you had got, you had gone to, well, it was probably too hard for you to go all the way to Culver City from Sherman Oaks, right? After a while, you know, I had because um, you were busy with your business. I was busy with school. Yeah, it was it was challenging going to Culver City. I, I spent a number of years with Jerson, and I and I love Jerson, mm -hmm. and I think that he's in a he's a great instructor. Yeah. it was hard, um, but he, he's a he's a uh, director, and he does films. Mm -hmm. You know, and there was a point where where he just was gone for like two or three years, mm. you know, and he left some brown belts in charge of the morning classes. And like when I was training with you, I could only train in the mornings. Mm. Um, and then once he left, there was only white belts in the class, and I, d I just couldn't train with mm. white belts. You know, it just it just didn't make any sense. And so that's when I left. Um, I mean, there's other stuff to the story. Yeah, you yeah. know, I'd met, I don't know if I've ever told you the story. No. I met Cabrinha, <laughs> right? Right, you met, yeah, that's us. Uh, we brought Cabrina to L.A., my wife. My wife did. I'm not going to take any credit for that. My wife brought Cabrina to L.A. Um, first, she did was, and this is when she was in uh, in the entertainment, and she made a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And I was watching him on videos. I'm like, this guy is it's freaking Legit. amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, he is the, the Cabrina. And so she's like, pack your bags. We're going for a week. So she paid for private lessons for I think ten days every single day to take mm -hmm. private lessons with him, and then we, you know, we hit it off in Atlanta. Uh, in Atlanta, mm -hmm. yeah. So we went to uh, Fabio Jugel's. Mm -hmm. We spent two weeks there, or ten days, and I trained with him, and I loved the style, you know. Uh, Jacarez, Jacarez, uh, Jacarez, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And I trained with him for quite a long time, and then we came back, and we brought him to LA for his first seminar. So he came, spent two days with us. Um, he called me up about a month later. He's like, "I want to come to LA." I'm like. I guess. Awesome. He's like, let's talk about opening a school. And we had just moved to a bigger location, mm. um, except for he just wanted a lot of money, you know, and I mean, I'm a, I mean, I'm not you and I'm not him. You know, I have the core group of guys that mm. I have that follow me. I mean, we're a small dojo. We're a small or a small gym. We have a small core group of people. I mean, I couldn't afford to pay him what, you know, he deserved. Like I couldn't afford to pay you or I couldn't afford to pay those guys. You guys are just at this level. And so he opened up his school in, uh, in LA. He was with us, by the way, for probably about, before they opened the school, um, for about five months, like oh, wow. every single day. We couldn't kick him out of the gym. Like his wife would call my wife and my wife would call me and yell at me. It's like, Danny wants him to go home. It's midnight. And so we trained with him about five months. I was with him for about three or four years. Um, and then it, that was hard to get down to mid city yeah, LA that's too. Yeah, disaster, right? Oh. Traffic. Oh, it was, and it was like, I was going to the Gracie Academy in yeah, Torrance. Same, same thing. Yeah, it was basically the same thing. So then, then I was a Ronin. Then I wasn't training for a while. So I found you. But you never gave up. I, you know, no, I never give Could've. up. Could have. You're like, you know what? It wasn't meant to be for me to, for me to be a, a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. You were a brown belt. A brown belt for 10 years. Mm -hmm. 10 years. Yeah, 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. That was 10 years and two years with you. Um, and I was here a lot, you know, every Sunday. Um, Monday through Friday, um, and then doing Muay Thai before the jiu-jitsu classes. And I would tell everybody, I'm like, look, man, I just did a Muay Thai class, and they're, they didn't care. Like, good, because we're going to kill you. And, you know, it was a great experience. Um, I had never grown so much in my entire life until I trained with you here. You know, it, it – you know, they always say, you know, like, they just – when you get your brown belt, I think, and that's – I don't know if this is true for everybody, but this is my truth um, – I th it's like a year before your your black belt. I didn't feel like I was a black. I was ready for my black belt even after those nine years. I mean, mm -hmm. I was training with my guys. I had a lot of great guys to train with. I didn't feel like I was ready for my black belt until you gave it to me. You know, I and and it wasn't like it's like I'm, I deserve it. You know, I've I've always learned never to ask for your belt. The belt mm -hmm. will come to you. Your instructor watches you, even though you don't think he's watching. He's watching you. And whenever you deemed it fit, you know, I was happy with that. You know, I would have. Did been you a get a stripe or anything ever? 
Um, no, it was a four stripe already. Okay. Yeah, it okay. was a four stripe. So, Interesting. So I just whatever. I mean, it was already been ten years, Professor. <laughs> you know, what's three more years? I didn't care. You know, I was happy in my environment. I loved it here. I loved the That's way. So you crazy teach. though, you could have stopped. You know, there's so many. There's a a billion excuses you could have had. You know. <laughs> I mean, just because of the situ- situation you were in, too. You know. You could be like, ah, it's, it wasn't meant to be. You know, I came to you and I was overweight as a brown belt. I knew I was going to have to take a licking. I knew that you guys were going to come after me because here I am as a four-stripe brown belt walking into your school. Who the hell is this person? Like, we're going to, you know, it was, a, it was a hazing. And it was a nice hazing. You know, I, I survived for four months, you know, every single day. You know, I never thought to myself, man, this is too hard. Well, because you too, you're, you know, you're not 20 years old, right? I'm At not. that point, you're not 20 years old. That's, that's, that's another thing, right? To keep in mind, you know, you're already. I'm 50. I was 54 when I started training with you. You're 54. Or you 53, know? 53. 53, 53, yeah. you know. Yeah. 53, you know. And, uh, but you look like much younger than, <laughs> than you know, really. It's jiu-jitsu. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But, yeah, you didn't stop. You know, it's, it's pretty cool. I wasn't. You know, it was like I wasn't, I wasn't going to stop. You know, there is no stopping. There is no quitting. I wanted my black belt. And I yeah. wanted it from you. I was here. No matter what it took. No matter what. No matter the pain I had to go you, through. You surrendered to the process. I did. Yeah. I'm like, I'm getting it. Whenever, whenever you feel ready, it was like, oh, don't you feel like a black belt? Oh, you're moving like a black belt. I'm like, it, that, none of that matters. You know, the universe brings you what you need, you know, when you're ready for it. Yeah. You surrender to the process. Yeah. I think a lot of people, they, not a lot of people, sometimes we all, right, think like, uh, 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 when is it going to happen? I want it now. I want it now. Right. But the magic's in just kind of surrendering, surrendering to the process, especially yeah. then it really means something, right? Dude. When you when you when you <laughs> when you gave me my black belt, I was I was in shock for a second. I, you know they call that the Google effect for self defense. They're like when people aren't aware of what's going on, they start processing and they're trying to figure out they're trying to figure out you know what's going on. Have they been here before? You know how do they deal with this? And by that time, it's too late for most people. That's where I was. I was like I was trying to pro. I'm like, what? He's giving me. A Huh? He called my name. I was like, I was literally like a deer caught in headlights for a second. And it was an amazing experience. And especially to get it with Professor James, because I love Professor James. You know, um, he, you know, coming here. I mean, everybody, well, not everybody welcomed me at first. They wanted to kill me because obviously you're a brown belt. But like the brown belts and the black belts, and I had a lot of friends here, you know, that I trained with previously at some point or time or did an open mat with, you know, Professor Joey. Joey Alvarado. I, yeah, mm-hmm. Joey. I met Joey at the uh, at the Machado Academy. He came in as as a blue belt, but that blue belt was so old and destroyed. Um, he became a big mentor to us, mm-hmm. you know, while we were there. Um, so it was awesome getting my black belt with uh, Professor um, James. What did, what is your what does your wife think? Like, just what does she think when you like like you know I wanna I wanna you know yet I guess you have to fight find the right fit right you have to I mean. Yeah, it's not so easy, like, you don't just show up and end up in a gym. Like, it has to, things have to kind of line, line up in a way, right? They, they told totally me Especially do. at your age and oh, for sure. just, like, the amount of years and the for people sure. you've trained with, you know? We had, um, another reason why I stopped is because, you know, we had a, a baby late in life, you know? I had a baby at, like, 50. And so, and he, he was like me. By the way, I talk a lot because I have ADHD and I, I have slightly autistic. So I'm, I'm really, agi- I don't know if I ever told you that, you know, <laughs> so I could be pretty intense and he's the same way. And when we had the baby, I couldn't leave her, you know, to, right. she needed help because he, mm. this baby, this guy's, this kid's crazy. Um, and that was the reason she would, you know, we both be waking up crying. Like, what did I do to myself? You know, we all say we want kids until we have a kid. Uh, um, I thought it was the best and the worst experience of my life, um, but I couldn't leave her alone to help, so I didn't get to train. I would only train with the guys at night, but I would be exhausted. Um, when he was about three, he could handle moving around on his own, and she could handle him, and mm. that's when I came to you. And I, I tried a bunch of gyms. I'll be honest. I went through a lot of places. Um, when I was ready to come back, I went everywhere, Professor. Mm. Um, and he's like, what did you think? Because you know, she's a blue belt. She got her blue belt. Um, this was the first place when I came back. She's like, well, what do you think? Tell me. I'm like, I found my home, you know, and that was it. You know, it's like you just know it. You know, it balls to bone. You know it. You know when it's home. You know when it's where you need to be. You know when it's when it's right. 
and that was what it was for me here. And I called, uh, I called, I called uh, Professor Joey. I'm like, Professor, I'm like, like I want to. I saw your schedule, um, I knew you, and I knew your reputation, um, and I know you're a great instructor. I'm like, I wanna come and try it out. He's like, holy shit. He's like, hold on a second. He, he's like, I'll call you back, boom. He hung up, like five minutes later, he's like, come in tomorrow. And so I came in, he's like, bring your checkbook. And so, my nice. w- actually he didn't. He's like, come in tomorrow. And my wife's like, here's a credit card. Literally, just like that. And so after I took the class, that was it, I was in. Nice. I didn't need to think about it. The feeling. It's a feeling. It's crazy. Yep. So let's go back into your I want to your your martial arts because you you yep. do cro- you do uh, like Kali you do yeah. all these like different different things. Is that was that did you do that when you're doing karate or is this something you're always continually learning? That's a great question. Um, I'd got to about my second or third degree black belt, um, and I was. I mean, I got stories for days. In the camp of karate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was bartending. I was bartending at this bar. And I always wanted to do jiu-jitsu. It just was really no place to train um, before I started at the Gracie Academy. Um, I came out of – there was a, I would work at a big bar. I don't even remember Q's Billiards. It, it, Q's now it's Billiards. Barney's Beanery. Um, the guy that owned Q's Billiards it, it turned it into Barney's Beanery in Pasadena. Um, and oh, okay. So, so I worked at yeah, this – Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah. yeah. So I worked at this bar. They had UFCs there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they did. This this place would end up becoming very violent, you know, at the end of the night. You know, you guys all know this. Too many, too many guys, too much alcohol, and not enough girls. You know, at the end of the night, we'd close up the till, and we'd go out and just wait for fights and just watch them. You know, that's what we did every single night we worked um, because there were lots and lots of fights. And this one particular occasion... Um, it was not the end of the night. I walked out to go get some more beer because mm. um, I worked in the back bar, and a pool ball goes flying by my face. I mean, it's and then I look around, and I'm not kidding. It is like what you see in the movies: people hitting each other with chairs, you know, people hitting each other with cue sticks. Full, on, looked, full on brawl. It was brutal, right? So, I'm I'm walking. And I'm like I'm trying uh, I'm trying to make sense out of it all. I walk, and somebody comes behind me and puts me in a headlock. I hadn't done jujitsu yet, so my first reaction is do karate. Punch him in the balls. So I turn, I catch his waist, and I hit him in the nuts, and he gets mad. And he's bigger than me, and he starts squeezing my head so hard. I mean, typical jujitsu mm. headlock, and I'm punching him in the nuts. And I'm sorry. I mean, I, I teach Krav as well, but it doesn't always work, right? I'm hitting him full force, and he's getting pissed, and he flips me to the floor and rolls me. Luckily for me, I ended up on top, but he had such a tight squeeze on my neck, I thought he was going to break my neck. Luckily for me, um, the bouncers, you know, you have to wear work shirts, saw me, pulled me off the guy, and then rushed us downstairs and locked us all in the basement, and we had to call the police to come in. They, we just, they had free reign, and the very next day, I went out and looked for jujitsu, and that's when I started jujitsu. So that's how I started jujitsu. Kali came a little bit later. Um, for fear of knives and weapons. I mean, if you go to YouTube or you go to any place to watch, you know, real knife fights, you see what knife fighting is about. It's terrifying. So weapons terrify me. Again, these are all arts I trained. So not to teach, but because I wanted to know them. You know, for me, it was not about I'm going to go out and, you know, teach people and I need to get up on stage. And, and because for us, it's, you're kind of a rock star a little bit when you're teaching, right? But for me, it's like it's, you know, being a victim of violent crime, I just – didn't want to be a situation where, you know, I had to protect my girlfriend. And I'm a little guy, you know. You're, are you 5'9", five 5'10", five Professor? I'm 5'4". At that time, I was 130 pounds soaking wet. You know, the thought of somebody stabbing me or hitting me with a weapon just terrified me. So what better art to practice? The Filipinos are the best at it. So I started training in Kali. Um, and I love the art. And a lot of, there's always these discussions that, oh, Kali is not practical. You know, we, we're learning arts. You know, how, how often when you learn an arm bar, when you teach somebody armbar, they're not going to pull off an arm bar. They're just learning the techniques. It takes years of timing and training to know when and where to do the technique. The same thing with Kali. Um, you drill over and over and over again until you're familiarized with when and where to defend against mm-hmm. a knife. And I still do it. And now I do it because I love the arts. And I've, I'm a guru in one system, and I train three systems uh, currently because um, they're so closely related. Um, Krav Maga came from a need because um, I, I believe in somewhat reality-based fighting. Um, and so I'm like, well, I, like, I want to see what Krav is all about. So I started training Krav, and I loved it. I mean, I absolutely loved it. It was... 
You know, it's they they drill a little bit differently than most traditional martial arts. Like when we do when we do self defense, I mean, in in uh in jujitsu, you know, you have to take care of each other. Mm. You, I mean, self defense. It hurts, you right. know, and you can maim each other. So we have to practice with a level of control. Um, Krav pushes that barrier. So what they'll do is they'll exhaust you, you know, with punching and kicking and just the same thing over and over again until you can't fight anymore. Then you have to do self-defense techniques. It's almost impossible to do them. And what do they say? It takes police officers one to two minutes to be completely drained of energy before it's life-threatening. Mm. And so that's why we train in Krav, and that's why I teach Krav that way. And, uh, and I like it. Like I see a lot of the uh, Krav guys, they do, they ended up they end up doing jujitsu. They you know end up becoming jujitsu you know, yes, you know jujitsu professors and jujitsu coaches and you know you have to right. Uh, so, what do you what do you say to the argument of Krav Maga versus jujitsu? That is an awesome argument. Um, because yeah, cause, you know yeah. if you only do Krav Maga, or if you're only familiar with that, yeah. and then you know. You know, just like the old school, like karate things, right? Yep. Uh, uh, should you know, karate is better than jujitsu. I and know those kinds of things. You know, you, I hear this all the time. Every, you know, it's what you're the guy to ask, right? Since you have all three <laughs> of those things. You know, I don't want to be on the ground, Professor. It's like you're talking outside. You're talking glass. You're talking. Mm -hmm. You're talking environment. You know, you have to be aware of your surroundings. Do I? It's 113 degrees. Do I really want to be on the floor pulling guard on somebody, you know, while somebody else is coming and kicking me in the head or I'm mounted on top of somebody and their friends are stabbing me? You know, um, I prefer to stand up. Mm. Um, I like Krav because it's aggressive mm. and it's brutal and it and they well, we don't call it dirty fighting. I mean, we kick and knee and poke through the eyes and elbow. It's the same thing that all their systems do for me. Um, I didn't have a deep understanding of Krav, and so I started training with, um, with uh, oh my God, see, now I'm going to get in trouble, with Krav Maga Alliance. Um, to me, Krav Maga is like mixed martial arts, um, but with cheating, you know what I mean? But it's not fighting, there's no cheating in yeah, fighting if somebody's yeah. trying to kill you. Yeah. Um, the survival, aggressiveness, right? yeah, it's survival, the aggressiveness. I, I mean, you've, you've got a wife and kids, you know? I mean, you're a ninja, but imagine the guy that doesn't know anything, and his they're going to kidnap his kids. They're going to, you know, rape his wife or his girlfriend. Mm. You know, he has no knowledge of how to do anything. You know, most people think, you know, I'm going to rely on my, you know, we're going to write a comfortable fight. We're going to pace our fight out. What if somebody doesn't want to pace that fight right. out? What if they want to beat you so bad and kick you in the head and kill you? I want to go home to my kids. You know, I want to go home to my wife. Krav just takes that whole level out. It, they turn you into a monster. You can gauge that. That's up to you. Your humanity is yours. You know, I teach my guys to not have any humanity. What about the argument, you know, like mm -hmm. people don't have the mindset, you know, to eye gouge somebody to their brain, you know, through the eyeball and stuff, you know, like, you know, like people, you yeah. know, they're, they're know. soft, you know, like I know. you have you have what it takes to, you know, there's some Holy Israeli and these other kids in other countries, you know, I know. it's a different story, you know, like, Holy. hey, I I'll no problem any day of the week. I'll you know I'll stick my finger down <laughs> your I, eye socket and rip your eyeball out. But like <laughs> us here, yeah. so is that really realistic to kind of teach that? I that? don't teach. I know I don't teach people to do that. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. But I'm just that. you know even so like kind of really committing on these these things. Like you know I, I just I just look I just I just think of like what is, I just I, I know jujitsu and yeah. I do believe in you should know how to do stand up mm -hmm. fighting. You yeah. need to know how to take people down. You know, you need to know how to fight. Totally. You know, like yes, I love sports jujitsu. Yeah. Yes, I love, you know, I love all the, the stuff. Life, yeah. You know, but uh, but uh, you need to know how to fight. You know, mm -hmm. if you're a black belt, like mm -hmm. you need to know how to fight for sure. Um, so in saying that, like the 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 jujitsu, it gives you like that control under stress, high for levels sure. of stress. Yeah. For sure. You have, uh, you know, Presser James or whoever, yeah. or somebody in side control on top of you, or, or Alshonda, what if yeah. somebody doing a cabo mount on you? you <laughs> right. know? No, I don't want that. You know, <laughs> like, 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 you don't, if you panic, that's it. You're yeah. done, right? Right. So it teaches you to be like, okay, relax, breathe. Okay, let me make a decision and mm -hmm. figure this out, and I'll get, I'll, you know, I'll get out. I'll define sure. my way to get out of it, right. you know, which is under crazy, crazy stress. Right. Right, is the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. So. I just think of that for jujitsu, you know, applying right. that to like a daily totally to situation, not a daily situation, but it's just a, hard, a crazy situation. You know, it's tough. You and it's and yeah. how do you get that with Krav Maga, you know, when it's just like, you know, quick kill kind of things, you yeah, know? I, you know, it's like you train a certain way in Krav. I, again, everybody's totally different. Right. Everybody has their own, their own belief systems. Right. Um, 
if you've never been a victim of a violent crime, it's hard to understand the mindset of, you know, somebody who's trying to kill you, somebody's trying to rape you, if somebody wants to kidnap your child. Right. So s- let's say, let's just give you a, you know, a scenario. So you're with your young daughter. Just want to, you're with your daughter and you're going and this guy just out of the blue decides that he's in it with a friend. He's going to kidnap your daughter and sell her into, you know, yeah. sex trafficking. Yeah. You know, you're fighting one guy and now you're overwhelmed with one guy and this other person is taking your daughter. I mean, you, it's like, those are the scenarios we're, we're training, you know, not, in, not in the, f- like, I'm not going to poke somebody in the eyes and break their kneecap. Right, right, right. You know, if I'm, if somebody bumps into me at the, I, 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 I think, yeah. I think the more knowledge, like the yes. things that you do, the, the better, right? For because, sure. uh, you know, how to do some, you know, some knife things yeah. and, you know, like some, you know, how to swing a, st- you know, all those things are, are good, you know, because yes. when you're in a situation, you have that knowledge, right? That's something to drop, Drop, drop back on, right? Jiu-jitsu, you know, jiu-jitsu will always be my, in my main base. Mm-hmm. And what jiu-jitsu has done for me, especially with all the other arts I train, right. it's teach, it te- taught me sensitivity, timing, mm. um, and control. Mm. Being a smaller person, you know, I'm sorry, as a smaller 150-pound guy, I have to deal with the gravity and the weight of somebody who's bigger than me. I need to be able to control somebody who's younger than me, you know, and at 55 years old, that's tough. So for me, I, I feel that exactly what you're saying, I can bring that to all my other arts. You know, I can teach, you know, a hundred, because there's always an argument, well, you're teaching, you know, a 110-pound woman to fight, you know, I'm like, you know, how is she going to do jujitsu against right, a bigger guy? Right. I'm like, I have 110 pound girls who I can't keep down. Yeah. Right. Because of jujitsu. So it's the same thing. Every, my base root, my nucleus is jujitsu and everything branches out right. from there. So I add my jujitsu to my Kali, to my, um, to my Krav, mm. you know, um, to my mixed martial arts mm-hmm. when I'm training that mm-hmm. jujitsu is, is the core for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just makes all the other arts better, not the other way around. Um, I prefer standing because I just don't want to be on the ground in a scenario where, I'm, yeah, I'm on the ground mounting and somebody's carrying off my kid. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I know every scenario could be different. You know, there can be lots of arguments for Krav right. against jujitsu and same thing jujitsu. I don't against think it's Krav. one or the other, you know, yeah. I, think, I think it's like, you gotta be, you know, we have the bang, bang Muay Thai. For sure. I mean, we have, you know, always, I've always had, I've always had stand up, right. Yeah. Training it. And I love like, you know, ha- the bang Muay Thai is, it's awesome because you actually drill, right. Yeah. Touch style. Like you actually love it. Get the special distancing. You get all the, I think, Things that you need, right, for for it's a for stand up with for in sure. a safe in a safe way, right? That you can consistently do and improve your skill set. Yeah, I think another thing is is um, one of the big things is one of my instructors back in the day, and I won't mention his name. It's like everything we have is in this system. Why are you doing that other mm. system? I'm like, so you can tell me I can't do badminton, I can't go bowling, I can't you know play tennis. You know, for me, it's just learning. I, I don't compare them. When I'm in that environment, I'm following my instructors. When I'm in Jiu-jitsu environment, when I'm with you, I train the way you train me. You know, if I'm doing another system, I'll train that way. Because it's all personal, right? Yeah. It's like I'm not trying to uh, I'm not trying to generalize everything. Um, when I'm if I'm in a scenario where I'm fighting and I'm fighting for my life, you know, then I will draw from each of those arts. But I should have trained those arts enough and have a deep understanding of those arts so I, they can come out of me, right? I'm not going to go, today, I am going to do Kempo on you, right? Oh, no, you are attacking me. I'm going to do Taekwondo. It just, the arts will blend in right, me like right. the Matrix. I mean, think of Neo. Right. At the end, he's like, he just sees the, the lines, the zeros and the ones, and all the arts become him. And that's the way I look at my martial arts. I don't like one or the other. I hate comparing them, but I know that's what everybody does, you know. Um, and it's just natural to do that. I think. I think too. Now today in age, right with the UFC, mm-hmm. there is no like one. Or there is no like one martial art. Like back in the day, it was cool because you actually pitted like yeah. jujitsu, and even, even so, like guys are cross training, right? Sure. Already, even yeah. if you represented jujitsu and all that. Yeah. But like today in age, like okay, maybe your s- strongest point is striking or your strongest right. point is grappling, but right. it's all pretty even, you know, you have yeah, to be just, these days. Like there's no, like I, I don't do jujitsu. I don't do, gra- you know, I don't do that. There's, you don't, there's no way you'll because never you're going to be totally exposed. Yeah. yeah. And so I think sure. the way it's right. The UFC has evolved. The, the fighters have evolved. Right. Is that, For sure. you know, a- everything becomes one. Right. Totally. Again, you know, it's like everybody chooses what they like to do. I mean, at, at my gym, some people only do Krav. Mm. They only like that. Yeah, some yeah. people only do the striking. They only like that. You know, do what you like, mm-hmm. you know, because at the end of the day, you may never be in a fight, right? And so you're studying an art. 
you're studying an art and you love being around those people, that's it. you know, it gives us a culture the process. Yeah. And that culture we love and we're become a part of that culture. And on your deathbed, you're like, man, I did jujitsu for 50 years mm. and, it, and it was, it was my identity. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, jujitsu was my identity. You know, it's my culture. All the other systems are as well. Um, it's just who I am, you know, and if, and the reason why I teach them all is because I learned them. I might as well share them, you know, with people, whoever will listen, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to study Kali with me, I can show you what I know. You know, if you want to study jujitsu, I can show you what I know. I don't claim to be better or worse than anybody else. I'll just show you who I am. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so that's yeah. the way I treat the arts. Yeah. I've seen some old videos, music videos of yours. <laughs> Almost the same hair, Professor. <laughs> Almost the same Almost hair. Almost the same hair. Do Man, you I gotta, you gotta, you gotta post an another one of those memory I videos. Only, you know, I only have one. We, you know, only we had, one. Yeah, we had a recording contract. Did you have a keyboard, a guitar? No, I had a regular guitar. Regular um, guitar. We had a regular guitar. I had. I had There's a, something um, very '80s uh, in that. In that. We were an 80s band, yeah. 80s band, okay. Yeah, we're totally an 80s band. <laughs> so where, where, where are you from originally? Um, I'm from here. Okay. Um, you know, that is one of my most proudest moments, moments being a Latino. Um, I got a recording contract, you know, against all the odds. In, in uh, 1990, we were the third act signed on Hollywood Records who had signed Queen. Um, mm. And so here you are, this little Latino kid, you know, who clearly looks Latino, um, getting a pop... Uh, recording contract. By the way, my singer was, you know, was handsome. You know, obviously he was the forefront of the band, and so was my my other partner. Very good looking white guys. Um, I was really proud of the fact that I could that I could get a recording contract being a Latino, um, because when I went to go do that that music video, the director who's from England, you know, Europe has always been uh, a little bit more um, free. Mm. You know, and he came up to me and he's like in his English accent, he's like, "Oh mate," he's like, "I'm really sorry, the label doesn't want you in too much of the video," you know, because but you know why. And because, uh, you know, I was brown. You know, they wanted to sh showcase the other guys. I got, my, I got my time, you know, but it didn't matter to me. You know, I know that as a brown, you know, as a Latino coming up in the industry at that time, that's what we had to deal with. Mm. Um, you have to deal with it anymore, but back then we did. So I was really, really proud that we did that. Um, and I've got one video to prove it. <laughs> that's cool. At, do, were, were, did you always do music, like growing up, I musical family? Um, not a musical family, um, but I started in music. You know, I knew from a very early age that I wanted to play music. I s was playing in bands. By the time I was 14, we were playing parties mm. and, and uh, in nightclubs and stuff. And we were just, and it was really, really hard back then because mm. musical equipment was very, very expensive. Right, right. My dad bought me a guitar. Um, I borrowed an amp to play shows. Um, and I just kept up with it. And I just really believed in myself. Mm. And we talk about not quitting. Yeah. That's the fortitude that I had. I wanted a musical contract. So when all my other friends quit, um, I kept going. I kept going. I learned my art. I learned my craft. I learned how to write songs. Um, I worked on my image. Back then, mm. the image was long hair. We were a hair band, basically. Um, and I just... I played the game. I was a professional. I didn't drink. I didn't do drugs. I don't think I had my first drink until I was about 22 or 23 maybe because um, I was focused. You know, I wanted a contract. I wanted I wanted to be a rock star. And so once that band ended, um, I was done. It was time for me to move on. So I moved into dance music, strangely enough. I've, I've remixed for Donna Summer. I've done remixes for Lou Bega. Um, we, we remixed for... Uh, Disney. Uh, all, we did all these remixes. It's called mm. Mouse House. Mm. Um, I really liked being in the studio better than, I think, better than playing live. Um, we did a ton of remixes. Mm. Um, and then we got our second recording contract with a band called Red Delicious. Uh, Red Delicious came out in 2000. We were signed to Warner Brothers under a really famous Japanese uh, drummer from a band called X Japan. Um, we were his pet project. We did our record, um, and then their label folded. They gave us our masters, and then I was absolutely done with music um i just had been doing music too long um what year was that that was right before i opened my gym in 2003 i see yeah so you were you had started your for at least a decade your martial arts uh journey yeah at that point yeah i was training a lot but i wasn't teaching i was just how training. did how did uh how did your martial arts help your music how did it help your life oh that's that's you know that's a great question um i always find when i'm teaching students uh, that 
if they have a martial arts, br- I mean, um, if they have a music background, they understand rhythm better. Mm. When they understand rhythm and timing, it's so much easier to teach them because they have they can break rhythm, you know. And when we're teaching, you know, so many people work on cadence and quarter beats, but when they know musical changes, they can break rhythm, they can break timing, and that's not true for everybody. But I find that musicians learn quicker than n- normal people who are not coordinated. Mm. Um, and so for me, it was really easy to learn the martial arts because of rhythm and yeah. timing. That's that's cool. Yeah, I was like, I was. Th- I think of like the kids going to s- school. Sometimes they bring a, mu- a music person in, and they mm-hmm. teach them how to, yeah. you know, hit, you know, uh, do drumming and yeah. like, you know, hit it with a go with the beat and all yes. that, you know, and how that affects the brain and totally. how that helps you learn and it does just feel things more. Yes. So. I'm my my son sings all day long, and I'm sure your kids were the same when they're mm-hmm. growing up. Mm-hmm. They, I mean, he's not interested in playing a les- uh, any instruments right now, but he sings constantly. Um, and I'm ho- I hope they don't take music out of the schools, right, right, because the kids really need it. Right. Um, it's important for them to understand rhythm and timing. Yeah, like my mom was a sh- she was a language teacher. Okay, and so she'd always sing songs oh. in different languages, and right. the kids would learn for a sure a bit easier and a little bit better, right, a little bit faster. Albuquerque. Uh, Santa Fe. Santa Fe. Yeah, okay. but yeah, New Mexico. We have our coat of arms up there, Professor. Baca. And yeah, Sede Baca. I'm actually a Sede Baca. That's right. Who Who's your mom's or your father's? My father. Yeah, so he's a Sede Baca. From, there's a billion Bacas in, in uh, New Mexico. Right, right, right. So. We talk about that a lot. It's <laughs> funny. Right on. Man, how's the situation with the this craziness, huh? We worked so hard all these years, and then uh, and then uh, they, they, they say... Well, one, they shut us down, right? And then just the, the, the media campaign of just the fear. You know, we do things, we work really hard to kind of, you know, keep people healthy and, you know, support our communities, right? We are communities, you know? It's like, <sighs> you know, it's I've, I've had many friends shut their gyms down. We're hanging on by a thread. Mm. Um, you know, I've, I have made peace. You know, I had to because I think I would go crazy. Yeah. I, there were a lot of sleepless nights. I was having anxiety. Um, my students stayed as long as they could. You know, God bless them, and I'm yeah. really grateful yeah. and appreciative of them, those ones that, that stayed until they couldn't stay anymore. I mean, we're operating at about 18%, 20% right yeah. now. So we're able to put food on the table and feed ourselves. I mean, and pay our rent. Um, my landlord has been really, really cool. I don't know how long he could go, right. you know. Um, we just can't pay rent right now. And I don't, you know, I started my, my uh, T-shirt company to try to make money to, yeah. you know, supplement that stuff. And I'm hoping that, you know, I, I'm hoping that, I mean, we've spent so many years doing this and teaching and sharing and giving the kids, mm. you know, I mean, what you what we both do for children, you know, it's just amazing. You know, I love kids, and it's going to be very, very sad to me if I can't continue to teach my kids. Um, I'm hoping we survive this, and this just sucks, what it really does. It sucks. And, you know, people want to judge us. They want to judge you. Um, my wife, she's like, should I open? She's like, you, you can't. You know, I tried to open, but everybody was afraid. You know, what the media is doing, you know, with all this fear, you know, you know, I'm not a politician. You know, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going on. I know that we can't continue like this. You know, I think that our economy is broken. It's going to be broken. And for people like you and me and all our brothers and sisters that teach and train in, you know, just in our local neighborhood, I mean, because I don't look at us as any of us as competition. Mm-hmm. You know, th- why do you think they have a Taco Bell, a Burger King, yeah. uh, all on the same corner? Yeah, there's enough for everybody. There is. And, you know, you know I saw a gym close not too long ago, and it just broke my heart. I'm like, I can only imagine what what they did to buy the equipment, to pay, you know, for the down payment, and we don't do this for money. You know, how much money do martial artists make? You know, we barely survive. I mean, we were just barely surviving. We'd be in the green, you know, and then we'd be even. Yeah. We'd barely be in the green, and we do it because we love it. We do yeah. it because we want to share our passion and our art with others. Mm-hmm. And this just, just sucks, you know. I hope we can survive it, you know. Mm. Um, I know a lot of people are like, well, like with Coyotera and the Rice Brothers up up north and you, like they're open, you know. Well, fuck. How do you think he's going to – he's got kids. Professor's got kids. How is he going to feed his kids? How is he going to take care of his wife? How is he going to pay his mortgage? How is he going to pay for his health insurance? How is he going to pay his car payments, you know? And 
you know, people that live up in the hills who have these cushy jobs, like, shame on you for opening when they get to work from home, yeah, right? Yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's even like, it's like, what's, what's good, f- you know, like, when, when, when the thing happened, the first, the, the closures, of mm-hmm. course, you know, it was like, we don't know what was happening, you know, right. but when the numbers started to come out and yeah. you start to see, you're like, oh, well, it's not, seems like, it's not, it's not like it seemed it was. And they just said mm-hmm. like two weeks and then yeah. I knew it was going to be like a month at least, you know, right. and okay. But then the two months, three months, like six months, eight months, like, you know, what's going on here, right? And uh, and so like a lot of people have lost their jobs, people yeah. in the entertainment industry, people just yeah. in, the, in all kinds of things, right? Breaking, yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing is like like what they've lost their their you know they've lost they've lost their way of life, right? In For a way, sure. you know. And yeah. all they have still left is us, jujitsu, yeah. exactly, sure. or training, right? And so to take that away from somebody that could totally you know go into depression or you know sadness and not have the the mental, you know, the capacity, the yeah. yeah capacity, be able to like get in the right state of mind to create to create other opportunities right for themselves, and you're gonna take that away from them? I don't think so, and so that's one of my reasons. I and then, then we're not even talking about the kids. Right? Okay, the kids have no school, they have no structure. I this is all they have. I, I'm lo- I'm thinking I about my kids. Crazy. Yeah. And so for the parents, the parents too, like, so like, you know, on that point. I'm open, you know. I'm open, and uh, I'm what I'm willing to, you know. Hey. I'm willing to do whatever, you know. This is this is craziness. <laughs> I'm going to do what's right. Yeah. Uh, for for the people, for the mm-hmm. community, um, you know, do everything we can do to, you know, to, you know, to to you know, stay safe and everything else. For but sure. you know, it's like it's like it's just it's crazy, you know. I th- I don't think anybody should be judging anybody if they if they have not walked a minute in your shoes. Uh, you know, it's but like and vice versa. Just you know, I, I yeah. respect everybody. You know, right. like all my, I don't even want to even, you know, I love I love everybody, man. There's like a lot of my like my brothers and you know, these guys, these guys, the guys I haven't seen them, you know, mm-hmm. because it's not even them, but like somebody in their family. Right. And I respect that. I love them For all, sure. man. If I want to, I, I don't I don't want to judge anybody or put right. anybody down or, mm-hmm. you know, or, or judge anybody. It's all right. good, you know. It's all mm-hmm. good. But there's a lot of people that want to train, you know, and there's a lot of kids that parents are just so grateful you know yeah. so you know why are we controlling you know these things you know sure. some people can't okay they they don't feel comfortable their their families don't feel yeah. comfortable it's not They're even right. them right it's their families or whoever yeah. man you have to respect that you have to respect totally. their 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 feelings right that's why i wear a mask for other people right it's just you have to be you have to be respectful you know if i'm if I'm with my guys, and they're like, I don't care if you wear a mask. I'm like, thank God. I have asthma. You know what I mean? Yeah, last thing yeah. I want to fucking do is wear a mask. Yeah. You know? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can't barely breathe as it is. You saw me in class. <laughs> Fuck, now now you're going to muzzle me? You know? <laughs> oh, my I God. Like, <laughs> I was like... I, and I, I love everybody. I don't want to get into politics. I don't want to okay. get into any of this stuff. No, <laughs> just out of what you know, I don't care, man. I just, I I'm just, I'm team humanity. Yes, I'm here for Me the too. people, here for the community. Here. I want Me people too. to be healthy, happy. Yeah, that's it. You know, that's it. Everything else, like, just you know, th- I don't have time for it. You know, it's crazy. You know, they always and say. I think we're the same on that. Yeah. You know? No, yeah. I, it's always the same thing. They always say, you know, never talk to people you care about about religion. And politics, right, right. you know, because that can destroy a friendship. It can right. destroy a family relationship, you know, because we all have our, our belief systems and our and that goes for jujitsu, too, yeah, man. Yeah. It's like, but our these dogmas, you know, they don't they're not real. They're just beliefs and our beliefs change constantly, yeah. you know, and so it yeah. is what it is. Right. Yeah. 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 Hopefully this these things pass soon. Yes. You know, I, I, f- I, f- I have a feeling it's going to just, it's going to drag on, though, into 2021, you know? You know, at least yeah. maybe not the closings, but just the, the fear and, the yeah. you know, people. They're not going to, they're not going to feel safe. You know, my wife says this, like, they're not going to feel safe in terms of the vaccine, even if it's a placebo effect. You know, even if they don't, they're not even sure if it works. Right, right. That's when they'll come back, you know? So who knows when they'll have that? They say November 1st. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. But they also say, like, how many people are going to take the vaccine, right? But yep. maybe for the people that that are worried or scared, they can take the vaccine, right? 
and for then sure. have a solution for the and there's for a placebo effect right they're like i can go train now you know and but some people again that goes to belief right yeah they believe that it'll make them it'll keep them safe so now they'll come out and, and train or they'll come and hang out yeah and some people really need that yeah i mean man like the fight or flight suppresses your immune system right mm-hmm. and so to be in that state all the time you're going to get sick whether it's one thing or the other covid sure. or something else right For sure yeah that's just the bottom line yeah, it is it is true so um, hopefully things things improve you know yeah. all we can do is put a smile on our faces and right <laughs> do our best right <laughs> you know like it, it is it was hard it was hard and again i've made peace with wherever i'm supposed to be wherever the universe puts me you know I'm, i'll i'll follow that path you know and you know, nothing's going to stop me from being where I need to be. And and I hope the same for everybody else because so many people give up. Yeah. You know, we just have to be strong and you have to yeah. know that our paths take us in the right where we're supposed to be. Yeah. I think success, people always think it's like linear. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But it's not linear. It's like no. you go down, you go around, <laughs> and then and then all of a sudden, oh, you know, I made it, you know? Yeah. But it's not like one, you know, this, no. this, you know, it's not linear. No, it's not. It's a way when you least expect it. Just like when you get your black belt, professor. Yeah, that's you it. least expect. That's that was the best example. way. I, you know, like for me, I would, I, I don't like tests. You know, show me how to do an arm bar. Show me how to do a double leg takedown because that's so generic and sterile. You know, um, I want to see that was that was just amazing, and I love that. That's old school. You know, I stopped giving stripes. We give stripes and stuff, yeah. but overall, like I don't really give stripes. You know, and some. Belts have never get not they've haven't gotten they've haven't gotten any stripes at all right. you know because it's kind of that then you kind of surrender to the process and that's kind of mm-hmm. the goal you know like yeah. you never know you might get it or you might never get it you know mm-hmm. but you just surrender to the process right. and that's where the magic happens and then it, you really really value it for sure and you got to be in the flow yeah right? you got to yeah. be in that flow state yeah. you know and that'll once you get there and you get there the minute you walk in the door. I used to walk in the door. Yeah. I left everything behind, yeah. and I loved being here for that. Well, I was here for two, two and a half hours. Um, <laughs> for that two and a half hours, everything else ceased to exist. Mm. I was here. I was, I was cognizant of why I was here and mm. where I was. I wanted to be in that flow state. I wanted to absorb as much as I could from, from coach and from you or whoever else was teaching on the mm-hmm. mat. I wanted to immerse myself, and I wanted to leave you know, a better jujitsu practitioner and a better human being, mm. you know, and the minute I left, boom, now I'm back to reality. But the moment I was here is a bubble, yeah. you know, it's my sanctuary, yeah. you know, that's where it was when I came in here. What's your favorite memory in your martial art journey? Besides that black belt, I, I have a picture of it, you know, of that astonishing look on my face. Um, God. I think it would be that, getting my black belt here, because it was such a long journey. Um, I started jujitsu in 1999. Uh, so for me, getting my black, it just couldn't have been more perfect. You know, you know there's a lot of people that they would post that have gone viral, like, I was a brown belt for, mm. for 10 years. And, uh, you know, I'm like, well, that was me. You know, I was a brown belt for 10, 11 years, I think mm. it was, yeah. because I was here, 12 years, because I was here with you as a brown belt. And just... You know, it did. The time didn't matter. Time stood still. Once I was here, again, I think it came down to I found a home. You know, I found a home, and now I didn't care about my black belt. That's the difference. Why do people care about belts so much? Because they're like, I need to move on. You know, now I'm gonna go train at this gym, or now I'm gonna go do that. For me, it didn't matter. And so my, I think actually, let me take that back. One is when we, sh- we sat in the office and I shook your hand and I gave you my credit card. That was my. You know, that was my. I found a home that I really felt like was my home and I was going to be here mm. and I was going to be legacy until the day I die. And that's what I think that was my favorite moment because I knew, you know, I, again, balls to bone when I sat down in that chair and I was sweaty in my clothes, my g- wet, you know, ghee was in my bag. You know, I knew I'd found home. And that was my favorite moment. Because, because everything else I've done, you know, all my all the arts, uh, you know, are a process. You know, they're just a part mm-hmm. of my life. Mm-hmm. I don't think of them, you know, in terms of that was so great. You know, because it's just, it's like I eat and I drink. You know, I breathe. So it was it was the signing up, finding your home. That yeah. was that was it wasn't even the black the black the black belt. Of course, huh? the black belt, but yeah. you know, just finding finding home. 
dude, how many people find, you know, they say you find, you know, three loves in your life and each one, you know, some people don't even find one, so they won't find their third one. The third one, you know, for me was my wife, you know, and I went through the first two, the one where it was totally euphoric, the second one where we just hated each other, you know, and then the third one where I'd been through all this stuff and she knew me through and through, it was just a perfect thing. You know, that's what, what this was for me. This was, I'd been around the block. I'd been to, to a million gyms. I've, I've been blessed to be able to train with some really amazing black belts, you know, but finding your home, you know, some people never find it. Yeah. You know, they just, they kind of just ride out the storm, you know, like, ah, oh, this is as good as it gets. I never felt that here. I always felt like I'm getting the best training. I've got the best instructors. I've got people who care about me. Um, and they're, and it's a great place to be for all those reasons, yeah. you know? And that was the best thing for me, I think. Worst moment? Worst moment in the martial arts? Uh, the worst moment was, there's a couple worst moments. One of them was, um, you know, I had PTSD from being attacked. Um, so one of the worst moments was with, was when I was training Kempo and, and I let myself get too hot-headed. But this guy was beating on me, right? You know, we're, we're sparring. And back then, you know, since I did, wasn't doing Muay Thai, we were basically street fighting, mm -hmm. you know. And so he's kicking me full full force. You know, we don't even fight full force, you know. I mean, it was like a street fight. I'm like, bro, lighten up. He's like, well, you're a fucking brown belt. You can handle it. And so I didn't mean to, but I took him to the ground. I just beat the crap out of him. You know, and he never came back. And that is one of my worst moments, I think, that that I didn't have control over myself. And I did the same thing at uh, at Hajris. You know, I didn't, um, I wasn't punching the guy. But this guy, we were doing guard passing drills. And we all have those fucking, I'm sorry, <laughs> spazzy ass white belts, right? And like, he, and he was bigger than me. Mm. I mean, I'm, I'm a little dude. And he threw my legs aside and he just dropped on me. And he kept dropping his elbow on my face over and over and over again. I'm like, dude, chill out. He's like, we're fucking drilling, man. We're drilling. And then he did it again and he just gave me a bloody lip. And I I, I, I went ape shit and I armbarred him, and but really aggressively. Mm. And Professor Hodger, remember, I'm little. Professor Hodger is a big dude. He's like 6'1 and 6'2. He literally picked me up and carried me out of the gym like a pig. Right? He carried me out of the gym. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? You're a black belt in karate. You should have a deeper understanding of mm. this. And you should have calmed down. I'm like, that guy was hurting me. He's like, it doesn't matter. I'm like, you should know that. And, and I'm not proud of those moments. Yeah. Those are, I think, my worst moments. What, what belt were you at the time? A blue belt. Blue belt. Yeah. Can I, can I give myself some slack now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Um, any goals? Right now, um, I know we're in uh, cr cr lockdown, COVID era. Well, you know the first the first four months, I, I'm I, I'm pretty out of shape right now. The first four months, I didn't do anything. You know, it was pretty depressing. My wife is like, "You've been training for th over thirty years. You know, take a break." And I literally did nothing. Mm. So one of my goals was to get back in shape. So for the last month and a half, I've been slimming down. I, I and this is probably true for everybody, professor, except for you. Um, <laughs> I had gained 23 pounds, you know, and on my tiny little body, you know, it was a lot. So I'm down about half of that. So I, wa I want to get back to my fighting weight at 145 or 147. Um, I just want to continue to grow, you know. I want to continue in the art. I mean, it's a little challenging right now. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I don't have any any anything else that I, I want to achieve right now. I'm just, I'm now I'm in the process and I understand now in these twilight of my years at 55 years old, I think one of my goals is to get my son really interested in the martial arts. Um, you know how it is with kids. I don't want to push him too much. Um, yeah, so right now it's just to keep going and not not quit the martial arts because so many people quit as they get older. You know, like I've already accomplished that, I'm done. I just want to keep training and keep going and hopefully I'll be able to stay open and um, keep teaching my 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 guys. Um, I do want my black belt in Krav, you know, just because I, I just want to, you know, I'm I think I'm a green belt, red under brown. Um, I want to get a black belt eventually, um, just because before I get too old, you know, because you have to do a full contact fight in Krav, a real one. Like I have to either do an MMA match or I have to do a boxing match or I have to do a, a Muay Thai smoker to get your black belt, and I think that's pretty cool. That's cool. Um, so 
I think that would probably be one of my goals. Under, uh, I train under John Whitman, who's a ninja in Krav Maga. He's also a purple belt under Henry Gracie. Okay. Um, you know, he's he knows jujitsu. Cool. He, he's not a, a slack. Well, thanks for your passion, <laughs> your your character. Uh, like I, I can't tell, but remember, like Serge took some pictures of you yelling. You know, <laughs> you know at the at the Tournament. our in house tournaments. Yeah. You know. I just have good memories about those because, you know, I'm you're crazy. very, like, personable, very, like, you know, very, <laughs> yeah, very, very personal, very big smile, hey, and then you, rah, 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 like, on the, at the tournaments, <laughs> truly, like, truly caring and passionate, passionate, you wanting your students to do well, yeah. and so I have that memory, so thank you for, you know, your thank passion you. and, and your character, me. and thanks for hanging out, always, yeah. always great to see you. Same here. Uh, how can people find, find you? Um, they can go to uh, NoHoMMA.com. Mm -hmm. They want to find out more information about me. Um, yeah, NoHoMMA.com. And thank you so much for having me. This is an honor, and I loved it. And uh, I'm really proud to be one of your black belts, by the way. So thank you so much for having me. Honor is mine. Thank yeah. you.